Shut up and sit down. Thank you so much for coming on the U.S. Interview Show. How are you doing today, Jack? I'm doing well. How are you doing? I'm out of control, as always. Unaweb Productions, enjoy the show. Your family here. It's kind of my, it's kind of my thing. <laughs> also, it's, what I, it's what I do best. Jack, so thanks for coming on the show. You are currently writing a book, um, Reinventing Hannah, correct? Yes. yes. Awesome. Reinvent- and this is still in the process of being written. Um, are you, did you say you're like in your final draft? Is that correct? Yeah, I'm in my final draft. I've written like five drafts before, which were mostly trying to find the story. And now I know what the story is, so I'm actually writing it. Okay. And you're almost through with that. And uh, we'll let everybody know Jack is uh, fighting a cold right now. He's being a soldier, soldiering on and uh, doing the interview anyway. So thanks for that. Thanks for coming through still with the cold and everything. Um, So we were talking before uh, I started recording about reinventing Hannah. The subject material is a little bit delicate to to approach, right? Yeah, definitely. Uh, Reinventing Hannah is about a 16-year-old girl who's sexually assaulted and it's definitely something that I have to approach with sensitivity, um, especially I'm a I'm a transgender guy, so I've experienced some, um, you know, I've experienced living life as someone who is seen as female as well as living life as a male. So I think it's easier for me to write than for some other guys, but I also think that it's something that has to be approached sensitively anyway, you know, no matter yeah. who you are. Well, yeah, I mean, the just the, in, in talking about the climate today, right? I mean, obviously, we talk about the We Too movement. So this is, this is I feel like this is a well-timed kind of, of writing um, because there's so many women who are finally co- able to come forward in, in having that community aspect of we can do this together. We don't have to be afraid to come forward. I mean, is that something you're approaching in this story? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean... Um, part of Hannah's journey is at the beginning she doesn't want anyone to know and then when she starts, you know, telling her friends and she st- and people start to know, and part of her journey is that she becomes somebody who wants to speak about it and wants to talk about what happened to her and um, she has to deal with being a little bit different than she was before. You know, she's... Yeah. Uh, so she has to grow. She has to somehow figure out how to grow through the process and and handle it. Um, I was thinking of the movie uh, because all right. So the book is or the writing is is like she's. I read a little bit of the synopsis in the first chapter, and she's being kind of shamed for saying anything. Is that right? Once people know she, there's a bully who, at school who starts spearheading this movement to like, to like slut shame her and and be like you're lying, you know, you're just a slut. And she also, for her, part of the reason it's very difficult is that she's uh, the vice president of an organization that tries to help kids uh, avoid alcohol and drugs and make good decisions. And so, for her to even have gone to a party where alcohol was involved makes makes people say even before they know, oh, she's a hypocrite and that kind of thing. Oh, yeah. Wow, so her character comes into question immediately. Yeah. Okay. And so when have you gotten feedback? I mean, have you talked to other people who have gone through similar situations? I mean, this is ob- this obviously does happen. I mean, it's it's not like they've been they've been talking about this kind of thing I think for for you know, hundreds of years. Right. Women, you know, being put down basically for coming forward about either being sexually assaulted, raped, whatever it is. And that's why there's such a it, they have such a hard time of coming forward. Have you did you talk to a lot of other women? Um, yes, yeah. um, I, I have a couple of friends who have ha- been in that kind of situation, and so I've talked to them a lot about what their experiences were like. I haven't really talked to anyone that I don't know personally yet, but... Okay. 
No, that's great. I mean, what was the inspiration for you wanting to do this? Did it, I mean, what, what kind uh, of drove the bus for you? Oh, a couple of things. One was that in my writing on TV Fanatic, I very often was critical of the way certain shows were handling the issues uh, re regarding rape and sexual assault. And I also, like I said, I was socialized female, and in high school I had the experience of boys would try to touch my chest, and I, would, and I once told a teacher, and the boy in question was like, oh, it was an accident, so nothing ever came of it. Yeah. And I ended up just being like, I'm just not going to go to my locker because I don't want to be harassed that way. And yeah. so that was part of why I wanted to write this. Um, and I also really wanted to be a strong voice for saying, you know, this is a serious issue. This is an issue that needs to be addressed and that this does really mess with people's lives. Absolutely. I mean, it, it basically puts people in the dark, like I, the amount of um shame and, and just like I, I feel like fear because it's a it's obviously a form of bullying but like that fear that is is made to run people's lives because they're so afraid to come forward and talk about it um becomes so pervasive that it starts manifesting its way in, un, in other unhealthy ways in, in people's lives right 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 yeah definitely um you know a lot of people a lot of people will start doing self-destructive things, will, you know, skip school or skip work or whatever, or be depressed, or some people turn, do turn to alcohol or drugs or whatever. And, and it's, you know, it's a kind of thing that affects people, too, in ways that they might not even realize, they might not even connect with why they're doing certain things. Yeah. Well, it's a, yeah, it's a, I'm, I'm glad you're writing about this. Um, it's obviously a very sensitive topic. Uh, so how how far out do you think you are from actually getting it published? Are you going the indie route, indie publishing? Are you looking yeah. for a publisher? You are, okay. Yeah, I'm going the indie route. Um, I'm hoping to have it published in April 2020 because obviously I'm not going to be finished in time for April this year, but April is Sexual Assault Awareness Month. So, oh, okay. yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah, so I figured that would be the best time to launch it. Um, so I'm hoping not this year, but next year. Awesome. And you said you have just a, some more edits to go through beta readers. And yeah. Like yeah. Yeah. So I'm hoping to have a draft done by July and I'll be looking like for beta readers at that point. Very cool. Um, I've written, I've been writing actually since I was seven. Um, I wrote like a number of other novels, but this is the first one that I'm really like going all the way with and doing something with. Uh huh. So, where were the are the other ones just hidden somewhere in a safe or like under the mattress that nobody can find them? Or where are the other ones? Um, well, a very long time ago, I independently published something called Winter Silence, which really needed a lot more work. So, um, I still have copies of it somewhere from whoever it was that I had published it. Um, uh, and there are a couple of things that are probably available or were available online at some point. I don't really know what happened to half of my other work because I was just sort of like, let me start all over again. So it just disappeared into the yeah. into the ether. And into the ether. It's five computers ago, and it's probably saved Back somewhere. When there was no cloud available to uh, save yeah. it for you. Yeah. No so. word heaven. Yeah. So, so. so this is a, a fiction, a fictional tale. Have yeah. you always? Have you always written fiction? Or is, has it always Pretty been much. like Yeah. Pretty much. Um, I've written both fiction and nonfiction, but I mostly write fiction. I did write a book that's still available on Amazon called Rewrite Your Life Script, which is a nonfiction book about how to change your life and how to uh, not work, uh, how, how to overcome old patterns of behavior. Um, so I do have that also. Um, I have oh, a, I have a master's in social work, so I've always been like a coach. Uh, uh, I've also done life coaching, that kind of thing. Oh wow, very cool. How long or how long ago did you publish the the book, the nonfiction book? Uh, probably two or three years ago. Wow, I want to I want to check that out. I'm I do a lot of stuff in terms of like rewriting, you know, old patterns because I'm in recovery for alcoholism actually, okay. and uh, so it's something that something that you know comes close to me and i was bullied big time as a child as well and you talk about you know people coming up and touching your chest i was a very overweight kid 
and they would do the same thing to me. They would come up to me and they were always grabbing me and touch. And it was just like I was bullied to the point of I didn't want to go to school. Like I just did, I couldn't. But I allowed that to actually kind of write my story moving forward. And I've realized, and I actually realized this through writing my my first novel that being able to let go of some of this stuff and work in a program of recovery, being able to let go of the past and re knowing that that's not who I am anymore and being able to rewrite kind of the the man that I am and the man that I'm becoming is such a powerful thing. And I think it's it's available for everybody, right? It's not like yeah. I'm special or you're special or like it just we're able to do it because we're special people. Um, it's available to those who want it, right? Right. Yeah, definitely. It's a. It's definitely something anybody who wants to can do. It's um very accessible. It just it takes some work, but work, man. Nobody wants to work. That's the thing. I hate. Like, I'm super lazy. I feel, I feel like, especially when it comes to like doing good things that are good for me. <laughs> like, when it comes to like going to buy pizza and ice cream. I am like on top of my game. When it comes to like trying to hit the gym, it's like, oh my gosh, why is it so difficult? You know, uh, like, all the good things, all the things that are good for you in life are so hard to do. Right. Yeah. I think it becomes this thing where you're like, oh, I should do this. And then that just gets in the way because once you start thinking I should. Yeah. Then you don't to. Well, it's, it's how it's how you uh, your expectations for it. Right. It's because, yeah. Well, this one thing is going to you know make me this person, this type of way. When in reality, it's like that one thing is not going to do really anything for you. Besides, it's like building over a lifetime of those little little things that we have to get into our head about, you know? Yeah. yeah that's cool that, that, that you wrote that. On. What's the name of that book? Uh, Rewrite Your Life Script. Rewrite Your Life Script. Cool. And that's on Amazon as well? Yeah, that's on Amazon. Awesome. I'll check that out. So, okay, you talked about uh, you work for TV Fanatic. What is that? Yeah. Uh, TV Fanatic is a website um, that uh, that – basically talks about TV. Uh, we write reviews, we write editorials, we write different slideshows. Um, I, right now I review five different shows. Yeah, I, I, I review five different shows every week. Uh, I review, I guess, for you tonight. Um, and basically, um, sometimes we get like advanced copies of shows, but most of the time we don't. So you do watch live, take a few quotes from the show, and then write our opinion of what happened. Oh, cool. So is it the same shows you do? You review different shows every week, or uh, like no? It's the same shows. You you get assigned shows. Usually, you request the ones you want to to watch. You know, so that when people are watching shows that they like. Okay. Yeah, so it's the same shows every week, and then anybody can write an editorial or a slideshow about anything, basically, that's TV-related. Oh, wow. How long have you been doing that for? Um, a couple of years now. I've been doing it since, I think, since 2015. 2015? So have you been a full-time writer since then, um, or is this something you do full-time, writing? Uh, well... I do a bunch of different writing gigs, so it's pretty much it pretty much ends up full of time. Um, for the last two years, I was in school getting my MSW, so I wasn't really doing anything full time except studying. Um, uh, but your master's now, to work. Yeah, but yeah, but now um, I'm pretty much like I'm working on TV fanatic. I also do some writing for a company called Scripted, which is like a freelance website where you. Basically, are you you pitch jobs and are accepted to write jobs for different companies where you need someone like to write a blog for them or something like that, and they don't have the writing skills themselves. Oh, okay. Um, so it's kind of I like just broker or something, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's similar to that. Um, the scripted tends to pay a lot more than text broker ever did. So yeah, text <laughs> brokers doesn't. <laughs> Yeah, tax broker. Tax broker is like really, really like pennies on the dollar. Scripted, yeah. scripted pays a lot more. And then I'm also, um, I, I also do life coaching, as I think I mentioned. Um, so I'm getting back into that a little bit more too. Um, and uh, I'm also getting a little bit into editing. I'm going to start doing editing services and that kind of thing, too, for other indie writers. So what's the goal? Like, what's the mission? Are you looking to uh, – are you wanting your books to be uh, your full-time thing? Are you are you liking being able to do multiple different things? Like, what's the, what's the end goal for yeah, you? Yeah, I like doing multiple different things. Um, 
my mission is to empower young people through stories. So um, I like doing both, like with the coaching, I like to work with young adults and their families. And with the writing, I like to write stories for young adults to serve dovetails really nicely. And yeah. then doing some like, doing editing for to help them out and that kind of thing. Absolutely. So yeah, whichever avenue uh, lends to helping as many people as possible, I suppose, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. That's fantastic. So was the getting into social work and that kind of thing, was that all stemming from uh, the childhood and what happened in childhood? or And also, obviously, the writing, was that the inspiration for right. kind of what you do? Yeah, I mean, I've always wanted to write, so that's one thing. But um, I've been interested in psychology, too, since I was a teenager. And it was always like this sort of thing where it's like, do I want to write or do I want to be a therapist or both, you know? And yeah. I think I struggled with that a lot in the past because in the past I was just like, well, I want to be a writer, but I have to have a real job and kind of thing, you know, and it was like trying to figure out how to make it all work. It's funny, right? Because that, that whole idea of having a real job, like I was thinking about going back to school to get um, my master's in social work and that kind of thing. And um, because I thought I had to have a real job, like everyone was like, you, you're really good at talking to people. You you know, you, you're always really friendly and and you make people comfortable you should do ther. you should be a therapist that kind of thing and i was like okay well that's a real job but then it, it came to writing and i finally made a decision i was like well i really want to write and i've been making this decisions based off of what other people thought i should do my entire life mm. instead of just and i need to i need to focus on what i want to do with my right. life because and at the end of the day and you can attest to this i'm sure that like it's our life to live right like nobody right. else has to live our life for us so, and, and the cool thing is making that decision, so many doors have opened up for me. Um, yeah, that's really awesome. Yeah, that's how it happens. I think, like, once you're no longer afraid to embrace your dream, you know, and to live your dream, it becomes a lot easier to attain it. Yeah, it's a, like Paulo Coelho, Coelho in The Alchemist talks about, um, you know, a man who's dead set on his, his goals and dreams, the whole universe will aspire to help him make it happen you know and that's kind of what it is it's like it's like the universe works for you as long as you're bold enough to ask the universe what you want right yeah or, God, or whatever you want to believe in it's like just be bold and go for it yeah definitely and that's definitely something i've been doing this past year too because it was like after i graduated trying to figure out what i was going to do next and it was like you know it's just time to like start my own business and start my writing and see what happens well, it's funny because it, it was well, not funny, I guess, but it's strange that it's hard to go about that because like there's always that, well, I have to make money too and I have to pay these bills and like I have to survive, right? Like how much, is that your cat? Yeah, that's my cat. He keeps sticking his tail in my face. I was wondering what was going on. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> trying to say hi. Yeah. But yeah, we get, we get caught up in that. Like I have to pay all these bills and I have to take care of this stuff. But in like we get in the survival mode, like I have to survive. Yeah. yeah. We, we forget that while we're like trying to survive, we're we're not we're miserable. Like at least I was miserable trying to survive. I yeah. always survive somehow, even through that misery. I feel like if I'm lit up and inspired and loving life every day, then I won't just survive. Like I'll still be able to survive, but I will do more than that. I'll start thriving somehow, you know? Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I definitely can relate to that because I've had other, I've tried so many careers. I was a teacher for a while. Um, what else did I do? I worked at temp jobs for a while. Um, I got my MFA, which I didn't really do anything with, <laughs> um, you know. And <laughs> yeah. then it was, it was um, and it was always a thing where it was like I was at some other job trying to find a way to write. So it was like, yeah. <laughs> you know. I would, like, do these temp jobs where it was, like, I was basically, yeah, so I would go to these temp jobs and I would I would spend my time writing and I would um, be a teacher and during my free period instead of doing my lesson planning, I would be writing. And I would just be kind of like, you know, every time I was at another job, I was spending my time writing. It makes more sense, like, to write, you know? Yeah, just spend the time writing. Yeah, it's, it, take a chance on something you love and spend your life doing something you hate, right? Right, yeah. Yeah, that doesn't make sense. And I'm not an early riser. Like, I, you know, I get up in the morning and I write. 
but I'm not the kind of person who's like, let me get up at six in the morning and go to a job, you know? I, I think most creative people <laughs> are like that, like artists and stuff. We like to sleep in. And I forced yeah. myself to get up through for exercise and stuff like that. But man, what I would love, I would love to sleep until like nine, ten o'clock and just get up and start working and writing and all that kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, having a refreshed brain is important for uh, creativity. And it's like, um, I think a lot of our creativity comes from dreams too, you know? If we don't, if we're not sleeping. Yeah, we're cheating ourselves out of dreams. Exactly. Yeah, where a lot of cool stuff comes from. Definitely um awesome so the book the book's gonna be out next april um yeah so how long have you been on twitter for in the writing community i've been on twitter for a couple of years i discovered the writing community probably two or three months ago you know how like something will show up in your twitter feed where it'll be like this person posted something yeah that twitter just decided was uh, interesting and this guy um i think his name is steven viner had posted some being like, hey, if you want to be part of the writing community, all you have to do is agree to, to uh, follow back other writers. So I was like, oh, that's cool. And so like, I responded to it, and I followed a bunch of people from his thread. And then I woke up the next morning, and I had like 80 new followers. So I was like, wow, this is really awesome. Yeah. So I started like posting in the writing community, and um, I started doing the Merry Writer game, and I've been doing that for a couple of months, and I'm just, like, so glad that I found this community. I know, it's, really, it's special, isn't it? It's uh, There's so many yeah. wonderful people in it. Yeah, it, it's really awesome, and it's it's so nice, like, I it's kind of cool, like, all you have to do is know this hashtag, and you're in. Know the hashtag, yeah, and want to write some stuff, right? Yeah. Yeah, I do also the VSS365 prompt most days, which is a lot of fun, uh, where somebody posts, like, a picture and a, and a word and was like, here's your prompt, and people just, like, write whatever comes to mind. It's a lot of fun also. What is, what, so what is the VSS365? I've, I've seen it a lot. I just haven't been able to dive into it. Um, basically, it's a daily prompt. Um, they post a picture, like today they posted, whoever was doing it this month, posted a picture that looked like a rocking horse in some medieval setting, or they'll post different pictures and they'll just be like, and then people will just write, like, a few short little paragraphs, it could be a short story, it could be a poem, or just, like, your thoughts or whatever, and they just tag a VSS365 tag prompt also. Okay. So it's just whatever is inspired by the picture? Yeah. Yeah, it's real. It's really cool because it's a way to like get daily inspiration to make sure you're writing something every day. It's a good way to start the day, you know. And you meet yeah. other writers because they see what you write and you see. What... That's a great point. Yeah, I didn't even think about that. It's it is a great way to start your day writing something. I've been doing a, a blog every day, and that's been you know something that's that's been a good exercise for me. As well, uh, how I was going to ask too, like so with your writing, you obviously write for work, um, do the freelancing, and then the and then the book. How do you how do you sparse out your time? Like how do you make sure you get enough writing in or writing in the right places? Like do you have certain days where you just write um, your book? Certain days where you just no. I actually I have a calendar, so I have everything scheduled. You know, my Google Calendar, pretty much. Yeah. Like every day, I work on um, my freelancing a little bit, um, and every day I I work on my book, um, and then I have certain days like I try when I pitch my articles for TV Fanatic, I have you know certain days I like to do that so that I know I'm not doing that every day, and I also um, I work with an accountability partner. Uh, that's what I was doing just before this. We get we get online just like this and we tell each other what we're going to be doing during that time and then put our microphones on mute and get done what we're going to get done. And that's really helpful because when you, it's kind of like you, someone's watching, even though they're really not yeah. kind of thing, you know? Yeah. So that then after, at the end of the session, we check in with each other on like, what did you get done on this? And that can, that, that, that's really helpful because it helps me make sure that I'm like not off on Facebook somewhere when I should be writing. That's perfect. It's like having a writing partner or training partner uh, for working out. It's like, a, yeah, somebody to keep yes. you accountable. 
I've, I have, I've never thought yeah. about that. That's a great idea, though. Yeah. Did you come up with that on your own? Uh, no, actually, she oh. and I were both were both in a group where the group leader suggested doing that. Uh, suggested doing that for like basically for accountability for things you don't want to do, like chores and stuff. You know, uh, we just were like, let's do this for some. It's always more fun with somebody else, right? Yeah. Very cool. So, Jack, what are is there, if there's anything you could leave the community or let the community know? Um, what's some pearl of wisdom or uh, just anything that you feel that is profound that, uh, for you that you would like people to know about you? Uh, what I, would I want people to know about me? Um, I think just basically that I consider myself a really positive person. Um, and I think it's po- I think positivity is like hard won. Um, it comes through adversity, and I really think that, like, for me, writing is one of the ways that I process all that, and I really encourage everyone to use their own stories as the starting point for their writing. Absolutely. Yeah, because it is a, it's a processing power, for sure, because I know for me, it's, it's processed so much of the stuff, like I just told you about um, in my life, and I'm sure, I mean, you've been writing, you said, since you were seven years old. Yeah. The, the therapy aspect of it's been amazing. Yeah, definitely. Um, now, now part of the the uh, the show where you get to ask me a question, if you want. It's fairly new. Cool. It's a fairly new segment. <laughs> awesome. So, um, what inspired you to start doing these uh, podcasts? Well, I'm glad you asked. And uh, so this is just to clarify, this is going to be on YouTube and podcast. Um, the thing, so I was, I wrote my book and I got on Twitter to publicize it because I wanted, I didn't know how else to do it. I knew social media was one way. It was free. I could make friends, that kind of thing. And I found myself chasing people down, like running around, going after people. I was like, Matt. Chasing people is never a way to get anyone to give a crap about what you do. Like, if, 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 it's, if it's good work, if it's important work, people will know about it, but it's not by chasing them down. And I kind of went um, back to my program of recovery in AA, and it's about attraction, right? Like, I want to I live in such a way and do things in such a way that people are like, what is that guy doing? Like, right. he's, he's doing something that's – that's different because he's happy. He's, he's being able to be supportive. And I really just came from a place of service. I, I saw that I couldn't, I was like having a really hard time getting my book out there because there's so many of us that want to show off our work. I thought, well, what if I could help other people get their work out? You know, and it really was just like a, I wanted to help all the authors be heard because I know how important my story was to me. I can only imagine that it's that important to other authors as well. And so I really just, I, and this is like, look, I'm two weeks into YouTube. Like this, I've, I've never done this before. And I didn't, I didn't know how I was going to do it. But I said, hey, this idea, this inspiration, I just followed the inspiration of, hey, maybe I can interview people. And I've always wanted to do YouTube. <laughs> and it kind of it came from a selfish place, but it was more of a service oriented thing. And it's turned out to be this incredible community building aspect um, and relationship building thing to where authors like yourself are getting to talk about their work and their stories and we're getting to know more about you um and i'm getting to learn i'm like learning so much in the process which is fantastic you know oh, that's awesome yeah that's I, I definitely agree i think you know it's one of those things where it's like do what you love and, and be interested you know yeah yeah, and, and that's really all it is. It's like I, doing the things you love and, and people will be interested in it. Um, and, and doing the things that I found out too that like like writing, I'm sure, and, and writing the things that are scary to us, like that's where some of our greatest work comes from. But it's like going after the things that scare me the most. Like the first time I got, my, got myself on camera, it was like terrifying. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I've gotten more comfortable with it. But it's like it's just that art form of putting yourself out there and like, hey, this is me. Honestly, this is who I am. And knowing that some people are going to be like, I don't like you 
for for any reason, it's not it's more of an assessment on them than it is on me. And just being willing to put myself out there as I believe that I'm a living, breathing piece of art. You know, I'm I'm art, and awesome. you, can, you can look at me objectively, and you can make up your mind, but it's not going to change who I was created by, how I was created, why I was created, and how I'm going to live my life because. I think I have an opportunity to live a beautiful life and share it with other people in the community like yourself, Jack, and, and so many other authors that I've talked to. And that's a gift, you know, and, and I'm not going to deny that gift because of, of fear anymore. Right. That's awesome. That That's really cool. I, I really like that. That's pretty much like so close to the message that I try to promote in my book also and in my work in general. Yeah, I got that. Uh, I got that trying to do as well, and uh, it sounds like we went through some of the similar things growing up, too. Yeah, definitely. And the coaching thing is awesome, man. That's fantastic that you're doing that. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, that's that's a cool thing because I would have never known you, right? I would have never like if I saw you on the street, walking down the street or whatever. I would have we would have thought, oh, I'm nothing like that person. We have nothing in common, maybe. But like getting to talk. And this is the whole point of this, getting to talk and share our stories. We realize, like, oh, wow, we have a ton in common. <laughs> like, we really yeah. have a lot. Yeah, cool. isn't that cool? And it's like, and it's like just like a chat seeing a post on a Twitter feed, you know, like, and you meet all sorts of people that you would never meet otherwise. And I think that's the coolest thing about social media, you know. People see social media so negatively, and they're like, oh, people are on it all the time, and some people use it, like, to bully others, you know, and get the bad rap. But social media really can connect people who otherwise wouldn't know each other at all. Yeah, and I, that's exactly right, and that's what I'm finding out. And the thing is, like, I used to use it improperly. Like, I had to make amends with social media <laughs> because I, was, I used it improperly before. And I see it now as such a connecting tool because the way I, I used to look at the world in a deluge, uh, delusion and, like, a warped perspective and judging everybody else is different than me, now I see that we are all so similar in so many ways. You know, we're all very unique and different, but the similarities are there. And when we're willing to connect those, how much more powerful we can be together than we are apart. You know, that's why it's called the Uniweb, because I truly believe, like, all people becoming one people. It's like, that's it, man. That's yeah, we're all yeah that's, that's awesome. Yeah, definitely. And I, I I do think we definitely have more similarities than we have differences. And I, and I can see, like, you know, people have different life stories, but we all have the same feelings underneath, you know. Yeah. Yeah, it, that's that's it, right? Like, life is tough for everybody at, at certain points. We all have those ups and downs. We're all human beings first. You know, whatever, however else we uh, classify ourselves after human being is one thing, but at the very core, we're human beings. And as such, we all experience things similarly. And being able to connect that has been such a powerful thing for me. It's truly, like, changed my life. And, awesome. Yeah, and I'm 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 so glad that we're able to connect because I'm really interested in this story, um, reinventing Hannah, and I'm also interested in your light, your uh, rewriting your story book that's on Amazon now. Do you have links to that one available that I can put on this? Oh, I have to look up the link for that okay. one, um, but um, there should be one. Uh, let me see. Uh, let me see. Re Write your life script. Here it is. Um, it is on Amazon, and the full title is Re -life, Rewrite Your Life Script, Recast Your Stuff as a Hero in Your Own Life. Recast Yourself as a Hero in Your Own Life. Okay. That's and cool. the link for it is Amazon uh, Rewrite Script Yourself uh, P dash. Um, Four two one four eight nine five seven five six six nine. I can send you that in chat. That might be easier. Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Jack, uh, thank you so much for coming on, man. Like I said, I really appreciate it. Uh, I wish I had a, I could grow a beard like you. That's fantastic. <laughs> hey, I hope, I hope you get better soon. Don't let that keep you down. Keep fighting the good fight, man.
Yeah, definitely. It was great talking to you and getting to know you as well. And uh, definitely glad we connected. Yeah, me too. Don't be a stranger, okay? Yeah, definitely. All right, Jack. Talk to you later, brother. All right, talk Thank to you later. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you would, subscribe to the channel and hit that notification for the bell. You know what? We love you. Love you. Love you. You know what?